this is about the, what was it, the 29th or 30th? 30th, I think. 30th day of uh, November uh, 2000, and uh, we're here at Lane Place. My name is uh, Bob Wernley. I'm on the Oral History Committee of the Montgomery County Historical Society. Uh, the fellow who's taping us is Mike Hall. He's the executive director, and our interview here today is Bob Morrow. I go, is that your, uh, I assume it's Robert. Robert is a legal name. Yeah, Robert, Robert J. Robert J. Morrow. Yeah. And, uh, uh, okay, Bob, why don't we uh, start in here and uh, first of all, uh, give us uh, when were you when were you born? And okay. What was your date of birth? I was born October twenty fifth, nineteen twenty three. And were you born? in Crawfordsville? Crawfordsville. Culver Hospital. Okay. Old Culver. Is that the old one? The out old there? one out here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, well, where did you go to school? Went to school. Started at Country Wilson. You know where Country Wilson was? Country Wilson. Country Wilson out the southwest part of town. Oh. It's no longer a school anymore. The building's still there. That's where I first, first seven years I went there. And then went one year in Mount Zion into high school. Crawfordsville. What road? Is that on the Barkers Orchard Road? Or where is uh, it? No, it's before the Barkers Orchard Road. I don't know what road that uh -huh. is. Uh -huh. John Bell Road, is that it? Might be. Okay. Was that the school that was made into a house? Yep. Oh, yep. yeah. Yeah. That's where John Barry used to live. Did he? Yeah, I think John Berry I know it's a, made that thing into a house. Yeah, I know it was made into a house. Yeah. Okay, and uh, uh, you went to uh, Crawfordville High School? Right, I graduated from Crawfordville High School in 1941. All right. And do uh, uh, you remember any of the teachers that were there or anything? Uh, Cresselius. He was there. He was there. And... Uh, Oh, I, I can't remember any, many of the other rest of them. Okay, and you graduated when? 1941. And uh, what did, uh, how did you happen to get in the service? Did they draft well, No, I enlisted. Okay. My father was in the Marine Corps before me. Oh, he was? So, and actually, we followed him. My brother and I both went in the same day, and we followed him. Well, what was your father? Your father must have been in World War One. He was in World War One in France. Yeah, he was in the Marine Corps there. 75th Infantry Company. Uh huh. And uh, uh, what about your mother? What uh, was she a native of Crawfordville? Not really. She lived here most of her life, but I think she was born in uh, Colorado. Mm -hmm. Someplace in Colorado. Now you said your brother and you enlisted the same. Frank and I both went in the service the same day with six other guys from Crawfordville. And the only one you're who is still, still living alive. is Eddie Gill. You remember the names of any of them? Yeah. Winston Heron was one. Fred Ingersoll. Uh, Bob Kitts. William. Bob Kitts. Yeah. Yes. Uh, his sister's still living, isn't she? I don't have any idea. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Bob Kitts and who yeah. else? William Rash. He's dead. And Don Kelso. And Fred Ingersoll. My, my brother Frank, they're all gone. All right. Um, your date of enlistment was what? September 14th, 1942. Good. And uh, where did you go? Here. We went to, well, my dad took eight of us over to Indianapolis to enlist, and we enlisted in Indianapolis. Uh -huh. Put us on a train and went to California, San Diego, to recruit people. Okay. And we stayed, uh, had, uh, Eight weeks training there, and then I went to a scout and sniper school for four weeks. Sniper school? Yeah. That's dangerous work. Uh, scouting was real. It's what I liked. What, uh, what, what, what kind of training do, you get, do they give you? The well, a lot of close order marching drill, just to be able to follow instructions, and then they spent a lot of time on the rival range. And uh, were you a pretty good shot? Yeah, pretty good. I think I had a sharpshooter medal. Oh, you didn't make expert? No, I had a sharpshooter. Huh. Uh, I would have thought that uh, if you were, 
I would have thought that they'd, uh, to be a, a sniper, you, you got to be kind of. Well, mainly what uh, my part of it was, it was called scout and sniper school, but I was a scout in an infantry company. Uh -huh. And what does that involve? To, what kind of training do you get for it? Well, we went to school and learned how to crawl through brush and trees and land, stuff without making a lot of racket. And, uh, all right, uh, you got, how long was the training in that, uh, and what happened after that? Then I went back to my original regiment, 9th Marine Regiment, mm -hmm. and got ready to, for, Go overseas. Yeah. Okay. Uh, going overseas. What? Uh, uh, what do you remember about that? Well, the first thing we it was night. It was in December. We walked, marched down to the railroad depot. Got on a train. Went down to San Diego. Got on a you ship. Left from San Diego. Left from San Diego. Okay. On a big troop ship. It used to be the called the SS Washington, I believe. Uh huh. It was a pleasure cruiser. Okay. We went to New Zealand. All right. For additional training, about three more weeks, months there. Okay. What kind of uh, where did they put you in New Zealand? Where? We were outside the capital of Auckland, about oh twenty miles, in a little bitty town called Papakura, New Zealand. Do uh, you know how to spell that? No, I don't. Papakura. <laughs> uh, they so that. Uh, in, what sort of a reception did you get from oh, New Zealand? Oh, great people, great people. If I had, if I couldn't live in this country, I'd go to New Zealand. You know, I like that. I, I got off at New Zealand too, and it, we got off at Wellington. Well, I was never in Wellington. Uh, we got off at Wellington, and those people just loved us. Oh, they did us yeah. too. They enjoyed us. We we enjoyed them too. Yeah, yeah we got uh, we got out. We got out in Wellington. They paraded us. Did you? Yeah, pray? we paraded right down off the ship, right down. That's what we did on a train. Through. And the people were just, uh, they just put out American flags up. Yeah, on yeah. They were they were afraid of the Japanese coming. Yeah, that's right. They were glad we were there, even if we were just training, and they knew we would be leaving sooner or later. But uh -huh. They were glad to see us. Yeah. Well, how long did the training last in New Zealand? Three to four months. It was, so it was to, in the summertime, got, too. You got to, you got to do, got to see quite a bit of New Zealand. Yeah, yeah, I did. Uh, what do you remember about it? The one thing that struck me was so much different than anything that I had ever been accustomed to was the narrow gauge railways. Uh -huh. And little, their trains were just like ours, and they were smaller. The track was smaller. Did you ride on any of them? Yeah, oh yeah. We had to go from to get to Auckland. We had to take a train from our little town we were uh -huh. in. Yeah. Then we went to the Maori capital of Rotorua and spent a couple of days there. Just sightseeing. That was enjoyable. Uh -huh. And uh, okay, what? Uh, you spent quite a bit of time there, so About three or four three months. Three or four months. And uh, what uh, what kind of a group were you in? What? Uh, I was in an infantry company. Okay. You remember any of the remember your officers? Or? Yeah. I was trying to think. Of it. It was Captain French was our company commander. And uh, we lost him someplace. I don't remember where. I lost him. What do you mean by that? He was shot someplace. Uh huh. And uh, and we had another company commander that later became the commandant of the Marine Corps. Oh, who was that? I'm trying to sit here trying to think what his name was, and I know it just as well as I know him, but I can't think of it uh -huh. right now. Uh huh. He was a company. He was a company commander in an infantry company, F Company, Fox Company, uh -huh. and he later became the commandant of the Marine Corps. Well, that was. Uh, did you did you get to know the fellow? Oh, that? very very well, very well. What kind of a guy was he? Great guy. Uh -huh. He was a. He'd come up through the ranks. Uh -huh. He'd enlisted and come up through the ranks. Not to go into service school. No. Uh huh. 
Okay, well, uh, all right. Now, you were training there in New Zealand, and remember then about about uh, when you got through with through with the training. What happened then? Then we went to our first operation, was in Bougainville, and the island of Bougainville. I assumed then that you got on another troop ship of some kind. Got on, we, we, we were on several troop ships for training. We had uh, landing exercises on a lot of different islands before we ever went to Bougainville. Yeah. What kind of uh, landing uh, uh, exercises were they? Well, we come off. Of, uh, we was on the American the boat called American Legion mm -hmm. for three or four times, going into various islands, and they put us in Higgins boats, take us hit the beach. Yeah. No, Just what's practice. A, uh, tell us what a Higgins boat is. Well, it's a, a boat about forty feet long, made out of wood. Mainly, it was made out of wood, and uh, it had a motor. No, I it might have had a machine gun on it, I can't remember. But they'd haul about four, 30 or 40 men into the beach, yeah. get you in real fast, and then they'd get out. Uh -huh. Had a place where they put the front down and... Well, this one didn't have a front. This one, oh. you, you went over the sides. Oh, okay. Into the water. All right. Uh, okay, you're, you're training there, and uh, they, they put you down over. When the action really started, where did you, where did you go in? Bougainville. That was our first operation. What do you remember about Bougainville? It was dirty and wet. We were wet all the time. Uh -huh. It was in the tropics. Yeah. One day it'd be 90 degrees hot, and oh. 10 minutes later it'd be raining on you. You'd be soaking wet. You just kept on moving, and pretty soon you'd dry off. Uh, what kind of uh, what kind of uniforms were we wearing? Dungarees, green dungarees. Okay, and what what about your shoes? Do you have trouble with? Oh yes, they wear out so fast in the uh, tropics. Yeah. You, see, you, you have to sit at night. You dig a hole and get in it, and you didn't move. You didn't get out of that hole for anything. If it rained, you sat there in deep chest high water. Uh huh. You didn't get out because somebody might shoot you. Yeah. We, we didn't move at night. We yeah. figured anything that moved was during the, the enemy. Day. We moved it during the day. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, did you get to change clothes of, at all? You know, I don't remember of ever changing clothes when, when I was on Bougainville in my life. I was there about thirty days, and I don't remember changing clothes. I'm sure we did change socks to try to keep our feet. Good shape. Shoes would wear out so fast, so anything leather would wear out real fast. Yeah, on kind of the moisture. Yeah, and the climate. So hot, humid. Uh -huh. All right, but uh, now tell us about uh, your first uh, time that you saw Japanese. Well, let me tell you what happened just before we saw the first Japanese. Okay. We split up. One company was it was a big mountain. It wasn't a mountain; it was a big hill. What it was. One company was going around one way, and one company was going around the other way. When they told us there was nothing out in front of us except maybe Japanese. Well, what so so happened? One of our scouts shot the scout of the other company that come around that hill. He killed him. Yes, he killed him. That was the first casualty we had. Oh boy, friendly fire. Yeah, then we sometime we, we met some Japanese fire someplace. After that, about oh half an hour or so, we kept moving. Found them. So, saw the first dead Japanese. Oh, uh -huh. uh, when did you see the first live Japanese? Uh, same day. What was the, what were the circumstances? It was in a firefight. And they, when they were shooting at us, we were shooting at them. Uh -huh. But we had more of us than they had to them, so... Uh -huh. We prevailed, thank goodness. Yeah. Did uh, uh, any of the men in your outfit get uh, picked off? 
No, there was some, a couple of them got shot. Well, the one that was the first one that we saw was the, the scout of the other company who was shot. They killed him right off the bat. And I think we had maybe one or two other casualties. Uh -huh. Wasn't too much. So. Most of the time we spent on Bougainville was in, we set up a perimeter. It was a big semicircle all around, maybe three or four miles inland, so the CBs could come in and build a airfield. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason we took that island. Bougainville. Yeah. We only took part of it. We didn't need the rest of it. What, uh, what was that airfield called? I have no idea mm -hmm. what that one was called. Yeah. I just know that the, the uh, 27th Army Infantry Division relieved us there. Mm -hmm. uh, they were, uh, so the Army came in after you did. Yeah, you, they you came, went in to take it? We took the, set up the perimeter and stayed there for maybe a month or two, six weeks or so. Then the Army came in and relieved us, and we went to Guadalcanal then. Okay. For more training. More training? More training. <laughs> Why did you need all this training when you'd already... I didn't think we did, but they did. They thought we did. Well, we got a lot of replacements, new people and all that, uh -huh. so that's why we got... Uh-huh. Guys getting knocked off and the replacements... Yeah, the replacements. People got sick with malaria and, and uh -huh. left. What about uh, that? What about the malaria and the jungle sickness? There was a lot of it. There was a lot of sickness. A lot of guys fell out from kind of malaria. They, they'd get it and then they'd get over it and then they'd get it again and get over it and get it again. Oh. It's re reoccurring. Were they, uh, did they have any uh, quinine or anything? Yeah, we took Adabrin. Adabrin. Oh. Adabrin pills as a oh. quinine. Yeah. Did that seem to help? Yeah, it helped. I never got it. It didn't oh. bother me at all. Uh -huh. did you, I took it faithfully. Yeah. Did you ever uh, later on uh, Experience malaria? Of no, never, no, never had any symptoms of it. Some of the fellows who had it. The only thing I have now is Parkinson's. I have Parkinson's disease. Oh, uh -huh. but of course that probably had nothing. And to nothing do to do with that. No. <laughs> no. That's a. No, no. That's a disease that older people get. Oh, okay. Well, let's uh, let's go on and talk about. Uh, you moved over from there, from Bougainville to, to Guadalcanal. Guadalcanal. The 1st Marine Division had taken Guadalcanal. Uh -huh. It subdued most of the Japanese. It was, there was a few still left, but not much. Uh -huh. So we just used it as a training base. Yeah. And uh, what was the, your outfit was the, which Marine Division? Ninth, we well, was the 3rd Marine Division. Well, I was in the 9th Infantry Regiment. 3rd uh -huh. and the 1st and the came in. First division came was on Guadalcanal before. before we were. Yeah. 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 What? Uh, how did you find Guadalcanal? What? Well, we were stationed. Some of the same, was it? Yeah, it's, it? The climate was about the same. Hot during the day, and then rain half the day, and then hot again. We were stationed in a Lever Brothers uh, palm forest. Coconut Grove, uh -huh. and uh, that was interesting. You get all the coconuts you wanted to eat. <laughs> I never, I didn't like coconuts, so I didn't eat them. <laughs> a lot of them did. Well, uh, now you mentioned uh, uh, stay in the foxhole at night. Yes. Uh, about digging a foxhole, uh, <laughs> you. Uh, I suppose the foxholes, you had a, a, a short, you had the traditional shovel. shovel. Yeah, you had a short your, shovel about that long. Short shovel. And you could dig with it, yeah. It was probably pretty muddy. Uh, <coughs> pretty muddy. And oh, the ground was soft, yeah. It wasn't yeah. no hard ground or yeah. gravel or anything like that. It was yeah. just dirt. You say you stayed in those. Uh, you lived in that hole at night. As soon as it got dark, you got in that hole, and you, with your buddy, two of you in a hole. Two of you. And nobody moved. Nobody moved. You stayed there, and that's it. Regardless. Did they make the? Uh, did they make the hole uh, uh, 
Just big enough for two people? Just big enough for two people. Did you two of you get together and dig it? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now you dug a lot of holes. Uh, you mentioned the buddy, your buddy. You had the buddy system, I yeah. take it. And who was your buddy? A fellow from Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. He was a, I was the lead scout and he was the second scout. He and I worked as a pair together all the time. Uh -huh. We led to all the patrols. He and I lived together all the time. We were in the service. Uh -huh. And uh, did you keep track of him after the war? Yes, I went out to visit him a couple of times. He died about, oh, ten years ago. Uh -huh. And, uh, uh, you, but you maintained contact well, with him ever after? He and several others. One uh -huh. from Texas and one from Florida. Oh, yeah. But he was the one buddy. He was the one buddy that I stayed most of the time with. Uh -huh. Who were some of the others? And one boy from Texas. He lives now in Orangefield, Texas. Mm -hmm. Or Orange, Texas, I guess. Did you, ever, did you ever hear from him? Yeah, I go see him. Okay. I, I saw him about three years ago. I, my wife and I went down three or four times while she was living. And what about uh, the... You say you had another one, another buddy too? One in Florida, and uh, he used to live in Indiana. Uh-huh. He now lives in Melbourne, Florida, and I he's... Oh, he's still alive. You ever go to visit him? No, I never have, and he's invited me down several times, but I've never been to Florida. You never? Never have. I just never had no desire to go to Florida. <laughs> It's cold, I want to go to Texas or someplace. You're a rare bird. Most, yeah. most people have been to Florida. Yeah, I just don't like, never wanted to go. Okay. Now, uh, tell us some more about your combat experience. Okay, from from uh, Bougainville or uh, Guadalcanal, our next operation was the island of Guam. Okay. Our company landed on beaches of Guam, uh, Agana Bay, H-E-A-N-A, Agana, Agana Bay. We have that, <laughs> Agana is the capital of Guam. Yes. They yes. have that, have that in crossword puzzle. Did they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well anyway, that's, we, that was our next operation and we lost a lot of men there. Oh you did? Oh yeah, we lost a heck of a lot of them. Was, why, why was that so tough? Well there's a lot, there's a lot of Japanese on that island. Uh -huh. They had taken it earlier. Now, how did uh, how the Japanese? Uh, uh, they had, they had so many. Were they in caves or what were they? They were in, they were in caves and, and holes just like we were. Uh -huh. And uh, if they moved. We try to shoot them. If they we moved, they try to shoot us. Uh huh. But wasn't it just kind of a stalemate? Uh, just about. But one night we were laying up on a on what they call a, it was a ridge we called Fonte F O N T E Fonte Ridge, and they counterattacked at us, uh -huh. Banzai attack, screaming and hollering. Hell. Oh boy, we we got a lot of them that day. That they, night. they just got up out of their. Yeah, I think they'd been drinking sake. Uh huh. As a drink, the Japanese drink. Uh -huh. They were a little crazy. They just got out of their foxholes and came out. Came out. rushing at us and well, we shot a lot of them. We laid there that night and there was a machine gun set up right next to us. And they lost, there must have been three or four guys on that machine gun crew. And I think they lost three of them, three out of the four uh -huh. killed. Well, then the next morning, our tanks came up right behind us. Uh -huh. I thought, boy, if that tank shoots... Because there's an anti-tank gun coming up over a hill. The Japanese was pulling up an old anti-75 millimeter anti-tank gun, and I said, "If that tank don't shoot that first, we're going to be in trouble." The tank spotted him and got him first for uh -huh. before he could shoot one. Oh, now you say that you just uh, stayed in the holes at night, and during the daytime you you well, got. The daytime up. we moved. Uh huh. We was either moving forward or laterally or. Sideways or something, uh -huh. move someplace. Whatever the whatever the yeah. plans were. What about your? Uh, 
Now this new guy was the company commander by then, is that it? Yeah, he made a company he made company commander right after that, on a ridge attack. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay, and uh, all right now you, you go ahead and talk about the uh, well, at, at any of this time, did you get shot? Uh, did you, uh, did you, were you exposed to fire? Lots of times we were. We were moving and they were shooting at us. We go as far as we could and then stop and dig in. That's my first shot. The first man I ever shot was right there. Jeff. Uh, he, Jeff. He come up out of the foxhole and we were moving forward. I shot him before he, could, before he could shoot me. Yeah. Uh, yeah. A lot of times you never in a, in a firefight you're shooting at people you don't know whether you hit them or somebody else does. Yeah. You don't really know, but in this uh, case I know I did because nobody else shot except me. Yeah. So I know I shot him. Yeah. You ever think about that guy after? No. It's him or me. Yeah. Yeah. I found self-preservation. Yeah. Okay. Just glad I could shoot first. You got it. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and talk about uh, about your service there on Guadalcanal. Well, there wasn't much to do on Guadalcanal except we just trained, went right. on patrols. Yeah. And searched the island for. We were searching for Japanese, and we were very very few times we ever run into any. Yeah. Did you? What about the Air Force? Uh, did were you getting support from the Air? Yeah, we were getting well from Guadalcanal or from uh, Guam. We were from, got a lot of firepower. Did, did the Americans had they established an airfield on Guam? Henderson Airfield was already oh. there. Oh and yeah. And we took that. The Marine Corps took and yeah. from the Japanese. That's the one I always hear about. Is Henderson, Henderson Field on Guam? That's where I saw my first P forty. It had to oh. look like a sharp tooth. Uh -huh. That was a P-40. That's the first time I ever saw one. Uh -huh. Did you ever come in contact with the Air Force, the guys in the Air Force? No, never did. Uh, were you on the Henderson Field at all? We had guard duty there one night. Mm -hmm. That's why I got to see the planes. Mm -hmm. I never saw any of the pilots or anything else because we had to leave with daylight. Uh -huh. Okay, go ahead and talk about some more about Guam. Well, after after we got most of the island secure, all it was then was just sent out patrols to mop up in case we could find any. Oh. And we found some once in a while. We'd find the Japanese for one or two by themselves. Where were they? Uh, how were they? Were they hiding? They were hiding in the, maybe in a tree or cave or something, we find our, we catch them running out, running in the open. Yeah. It didn't last long when they caught them out in the open. Yeah. Did you ever take any prisoners? No. No, well, I'll tell, we, tell you a little story. We were on a road with a anti-tank gun, there's a 37 millimeter anti-tank gun sitting on the middle of the road because we'd seen some Japanese tanks, light tanks. Uh -huh. And we were infantry supporting this and a tank gun. Here come a Japanese with his hands up, hollering, walking down the road, and everybody kept waving, come on. He came in close enough and somebody shot him. Oh. Didn't give him a chance to surrender. That, uh, that's the story that I've heard a lot of times. Yeah, that, that happened. I saw it. Uh, did uh, some, somebody just uh, deliberately did somebody it? Somebody just deliberately did it. Mm -hmm. He didn't give him a chance to surrender. Mm -hmm. Have his hands over his head. Yeah. Yeah, he was giving up. Oh, go ahead then. We were, we're on Guam now. We got Guam pretty it's well. It's pretty well secured. Did you ever look in any of those caves that, the, that these guys were hiding in? Yes, you see all kinds of stuff in there. Now, Food, 